Those Days with the Monsters, Part 9 With a groan, Kirill limped his way to the dining area. Every joint in his legs ached, and his back was quite sore from landing on it so often. Hey, it's Squishy! A roar went up from the dining area. Kirill's frills turned bright purple with embarrassment as he realised the entire Kuman crew was present. Alex had entered behind him, and was greeted with half the crew announcing that they'd take mixed martial arts for various amounts. The flush of purple became mixed with teal as Kirill looked between the crew and the Kuman female who had just spent far too long knocking him onto his back. Alex, why do they say that? What I'm teaching you to do is call mixed martial arts, and Alex, it's a reference to an old game. You have games doing this sort of thing? Kirill was startled, but the more he thought about it, the more it made sense. No wonder they had fought so easily against the Tizix. they played fighting games for sport. Technically, I guess. Alex sounded as if Kirill had missed something, but he had no way of telling what. Have you won any? Kirill asked, slightly nervous to hear the answer. Alex looked away. It doesn't matter, does it? A roar of Kuman amusement sound burst from one of the tables. Grumpy had risen to his feet, his teeth bared wide. Are you kidding me? She's a three-time solar champion. Kirill looked at Alex again with wide eyes. Really? She looked down. Kirill's translator couldn't help him with her expression, but he almost thought she looked uncomfortable. He hesitated, wondering why. Winning a fighting competition with creatures as strong and warlike as the Cumans was no small feat, so why? Why didn't she announce it? He certainly would have. Then again, Kirill knew that Cumans seemed to think about things differently. If she was unhappy with her victories, there had to be a reason. For a moment, Kirill considered asking Alex about the reason, but he decided against it. With a sudden rush of pride, he realised that he might have just interpreted a Cuman's expression without the help of a translator. His frills perked up at the thought. He would have to ask Sleepy if he understood correctly later. Sleepy wasn't here right now. True to his name, he must be in bed. Kirill realised that he must have stayed up quite late to see him to Alex's room full of fighting equipment, and he felt a slight rush of something odd. It felt like a mix of happiness and pride, mixed with nervousness and a hope that he could make Sleepy proud. Suddenly, his frills flared red as a hand clapped onto his shoulder. Already half his body length in the air and turned most of the way around, Kirill realised that it was Alex. She stared at him with an open mouth for a moment, then bared her teeth in the Cumin way. Kirill, distracted, failed the landing and smacked into his already sore tail. His frill orange with indignation, he looked up at Alex, whose mouth was still wide open. Ah, uh, what the hell is that recovery time? She demanded. Kirill tilted his head, teal spots pulsing on his frills. But she answered his question before he asked. Nobody can make a jump like that after their first day. That's silly, Kirill mumbled, getting up and rubbing his aching tail. Anyone jumps when they've been spooked. Cap, what is this? You said I was getting him green, Alex demanded, her arms resting on her hips. Kirill's translator stated that the posture was confrontational. Did you forget anything again? The captain sighed, taking a drink from a large mug of something brown and foamy in front of him. Well, not quite. He used to run cargo, and remember alien biology? For all we know, he just recharges faster. The captain went back to staring at his mug. Kirill's translator informed him that the look was angry. Alex sighed and crossed her upper limbs over her chest. Fine, as long as I don't have to unteach him anything, I can work with it. I haven't forgotten, Mr. I can beat you blindfold over there. She pointed one hand at someone seated elsewhere in the dining room, who slouched slightly further as a ripple of Cumin amusement sounds echoed. Kirill's frills perked up, brilliantly fuchsia, and Alex's lips curved upwards. Are you trying to ask what happened without asking? Slightly offended by the insinuation, Kirill's felt his frills go orange, but the spines were an embarrassed purple. Alex made the Cumin amusement noise, looking at his frills. Ooh, gotcha! That word wasn't familiar to Kirill, but he stored it away for later. Fine then, I'll ask. 
Why is that coon embarrassed? Alex bared her teeth widely. Oh, he signed on thinking he didn't have to go through basic. I cleared him of that idea pretty quickly, but he said he could beat me blindfolded, and I kicked his ass for it. She snorted, shaking her head. Wasn't even Marines. He was army, barely cleared ground troops basic, much less grav base basics, and he figured he was too good to learn from me. Worse, I had to unteach him all the ineffective movements he'd picked up from being crap at earthbound basic before I could even start to actually teach him. Kirill understood essentially none of that, but he was able to tell that it wasn't a good thing. He felt a surge of pity for the unfortunate crew member who had had to deal with an unhappy Alex. So, you want to be sure I don't have any bad habits? Yeah, something like that. It's more that I have a grudge against Cat for that. He said the guy was green, didn't say he was green with bad habits. Alex bared her teeth again. I'm never gonna let him live it down. He's gotten better about picking up strays, but... Kirill flinched as the captain slammed his mug onto the table and stood. Damn it, Hook! He stood and marched over his eyes flashing. Kirill's frills slowly turned red as he approached. Anger. It wasn't the same anger as he'd shown toward the Tizix, Kirill thought. Or was it? He wasn't sure. He prayed it wasn't, though he wasn't sure who exactly he was praying to. The captain reached out and Kirill flinched away. The captain grabbed Alex's hand and held it in front of her face, his eyes flashing. Kirill watched, wide-eyed, as Alex stepped back but didn't pull away. Listen, Hook, we're launching headfirst into trouble. This, this is nothing. The captain shook Alex's hand in front of her face, wait until it's a leg instead, or one of squishies. He calls Earth the death world, can he even slow the bleeding on his own? We couldn't even give him a transfusion. Our immune system would eat him alive. The captain, shaking with what Kirill's translator informed him was anger, threw the hand in his grasp. It hit the doorframe with a clang. Alex didn't move, as if she didn't feel pain from the collision. The captain stalked back from the table, picked up his mug and snapped. I'm going to the bridge, don't follow me. Damn it, Hook, take this seriously. As the captain left, a sober hush fell over the dining room. Kirill took a deep breath closing his inner eyelids and trying to calm his agitation. Whew! At the sound, Kirill opened his eyes to see Alex's hand reaching for his shoulder. She hesitated and patted it awkwardly. Don't worry, kid. He's not mad at you. Or me either, really. He's just stressed. Just stressed? Kirill took a moment to glance around the room. None of the Kuman crew seemed scared, and soon enough the talk picked up again. I... How do you Cumans do it? A clear display of aggression and no one is freaking out. His frills turned fuchsia around the edges. And you definitely hit your hand on the doorframe. Does it just not hurt? Do Cumans not feel pain? It would definitely explain why Alex had an edge on him, on the mat, as she put it. No wonder he hadn't been able to land a hit on her. Well, you might say she's had enough pain in that hand to last a lifetime. A member of the crew wandered up. Hey there, Squishy. If she's Hook, I'm Smee. We've talked, but I haven't really introduced myself. So, you're the colour one. Kirill looked at the Cumin. It was the darker one he had talked to when the captain had announced that they were going to steal data from the military. Oh, don't, don't say that. Smee looked around. I know you don't mean it like that, but don't say that. Oh, but I heard you see extra colours. Kirill's frills pulsed teal confusion, which deepened as Smee roared with cumin amusement. Ha! <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. Smee wiped his eyes from their secretions. Yeah, I do. I have a mutation. Let's me see a lot more colours. Doc says it's something on the order of a hundred million. A uh, hundred million? Kirill's eyes widened in astonishment. How many do normal cumin see? Well, I asked Doc and he said it's about a million. Sleepy had grossly misled Kirill if that was the case. Kirill's head spun. He couldn't imagine seeing so many different shades. How could Kumans process so many different colours? Were their brains entirely made of colour processing? To be honest, that might explain their crazy behaviour. Maybe impulse control had been converted into visual processing. So, you said you're only Smee if she's... 
Kirill paused, debating whether Hook was meant to be a Cuman name or just a word he could translate. He settled on using the Galactic Standard translation to avoid trying to make the troublesome hissing sound. Hook? Yep, yeah, they're from an old story like Dopey and Sleepy. Smee bared his teeth. Different story though. So don't go trying to figure out which dwarf is Hook. Alex bared her teeth too, watching Kirill's frills pulse as curious fuchsia and confused teal vied for dominance. We kinda lost you there, didn't we, kid? Sorry, Jason. Oops, that's Smee and our siblings. Suddenly, everything seemed to resolve in Kirill's mind. Clearly, the Hook and Smee characters were closely related as well then. They must go together. But he still wanted clarification on one more point. What did you mean about the hand pain? Kirill asked hesitantly. Smee grinned, grabbed Alex's hand, and to Kirill's horror, detached it. Her hand, her hand was not connected to her arm. No blood, no pain, just a horrible space of air where there should be flesh. Kirill stared at the gap with wide, shocked eyes for only an instant before his body decided enough was enough. The world spun and he found himself on the floor, wondering idly how he'd gotten there, a second before he passed out.